Who's there? Hey, answer me, stand and unfold yourself! Long live the king! See you now? Your bait of falsehood takes this carp of truth. And thus the way of wisdom and of reach, by indirections, find directions out. You have me, have you not? Welcome, dear Rosencrantz and Guildenstern. Moreover, that we much did long to see you, the need we have to use you did provoke our hasty sending. Something have you heard of Hamlet's transformation, so call it, since nor the exterior nor the inward man resembles that it was? What it should be, more than his father's death, that thus have put him so much from the understanding of himself, I cannot dream of. I entreat you both that being of so young days brought up with him that you vouchsafe your rest here in our court some little time, so by your companies to draw him on to pleasures and to gather so much as of occasion you may glean, whether aught to us unknown afflicts him thus that opened lies within our remedy. But in the beaten way of friendship, what make you at Elsinore? To visit you, my lord, no other occasion. Were you not sent for? <laughs> Is it your own inclining? Is it a free visitation? Come, come. Deal justly with me. Come, come, nay, speak! Oh! What, what, what shall we say, my lord? Why, well, anything but to the purpose. I know you were sent for, and there is a kind of confession in your looks. Your modesty have a dark enough to colour. I know the good king and queen have sent for you. <laughs> to, to what end, my lord? That you must teach me. But let me conjure you by the right of our fellowship. Be even and direct with me whether you are sent for or no. <laughs> what say you? <laughs> nay, then, I have an eye of you. If you love me, hold not off. My lord, we were sent for. The spirit I have seen may be the devil, and the devil hath the power to assume a pleasing shape. Yea, and perhaps out of my melancholy and my weakness abuses me to damn me. Help! Help! Now a rat! Help! Dead! Dead for a Dead! What hast thou done? I know not. Is it the king? Thou wretched, rash, intruding fool! Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Take thy fortune. What rash and bloody deed is a this? Bloody deed? Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. As kill a king? I, lady, twas my word. If you want to know what's happening in Hamlet, you need look no further than the first line of this play. Two words. Who's there? This play is an interrogation of who is really who and who is authentically who and who is pretending to be something that they're not. Everyone is spying on everyone. Polonius sends Rinaldo to spy on his own son, Laertes, in Paris. He uses Ophelia as a spy so that him and the king can spy on Hamlet. The king and the queen bring Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, Hamlet's old friends from school, to Elsinore to spy on Hamlet. But no one interrogates more thoroughly who's there than our hero, Hamlet. He's lost his father recently, his mother has married his uncle, and he's deeply depressed when the play starts. Not long after that, he is visited by the ghost of his father, who tells him that he's been murdered by his uncle, and the ghost implores Hamlet that he has to take revenge for the death of his dad. And this leaves our hero, who's a student and a scholar, very perplexed, because he really wants to interrogate whether what the ghost has told him is the truth. The one moment in the play where Hamlet does not thoroughly interrogate and question who, what, and why is the moment in his mother's closet when he hears something behind the arras and instead of asking who's there, he rashly and blindly stabs into the arras hoping that it's the king and that he can avenge his father's death. 
only to realize too late that he has actually killed Polonius. And from that moment on, Hamlet is doomed. He now has blood on his hands, just like Claudius, and he has sealed his fate as a tragic hero.